Hiya folks, we're back in the workshop again. I haven't been in here for a hell of a long time. It's four degrees in here, so it's very cold. And as you know, I've got my diesel heater, which I fitted over in the uh, corner there, which I need to do a bit of modification on the exhaust because the silencer for it is inside and apparently they leak quite a lot. And that'll bring carbon monoxide into my cabin. So I can't have that. So we're gonna change that exhaust over. We're gonna get the ST220 moved today. It's been standing now for about probably two to three months, maybe and I'm gonna to have to put the battery back on that and we'll get it moved because I've got some work to do on the front. So I wanna get it run up, get it moved over to under the carport so that I can then take the wheels off and we can have a look at the, uh, the disc, possible disc or pad problem, which I've got a noise when it rotates. It's out of MOT, it's out of Rotex, so it's off the road. So let's get that going. Let's get warmed up in here as well and let's get that exhaust manifold moved to outside the log cabin so I can put that diesel heater on and get warm in here. Right, so as you can see folks, this is my diesel heater I've got situated in the corner here. A few questions people have been asking about it. One was obviously this is fitted inside and they, these leak apparently. So if you've got one of these, make sure it is outside. So I'm gonna place this on the other side of the wall and apparently they don't really do much sound deadening anyway. People have run them without that. And another thing people asked as well was uh, this exhaust pipe. I put exhaust wrap on. Someone said you want to pr probably try and maximize the heat coming from the exhaust to warm up your log cabin a lot more. Things with these is these can get actually red hot. I've seen these get red hot before. And the reason why I covered it up is that sometimes we store stuff on here. There's, there could be vapors in the air that might have a low flash point and I don't want a red hot exhaust accidentally flash point in a, uh, something which might be airborne when we use an aerosol spray or whatever. So that's another reason why I did wrap it up and that's gonna stay wrapped as well. You can buy, I've seen them, uh, one of my subscribers sent me a link to a product which he uses in his log cabin, where he comes out of the uh, diesel heater and it goes into a special, like a heat exchanger element which radiates heat like a radiator. So you can buy them. If I can find a link to them, I'll put a link in the description below. He did send me a link and they're only about 45 pounds. So if you haven't got an issue with um, flash points and stuff like that with chemicals possibly in the air, you can actually put a, like a, a radiator that this plugs into and it actually heats the air as well. So that's another way of looking at it. So I'm gonna start taking this off now and uh, get this put outside. Right, so I've just undone the two Jubilee clips from them folks, and I've literally just pulled that silencer out and pulling that back like that. So that's what I'm actually left with. So what I'll do is I'll stick this pipe in from outside and then connect this bit up to this pipe there, and then I'll rewrap that as well. So then this is on the outside. So if I just tighten that clamp back up, so I did loosen it, I don't need that loosened to be honest with you. There we go. So I'll just stick that through from outside now, so I'll be back in a minute. There we go. Right, okay folks, so that's coming through there now. Uh, I've just got to place this pipe, hopefully back in there like that, and then tighten that clamp up. There we go. Yeah, that's tight now folks, that's not spinning. Right, so that's that done. Right, so I'm just gonna take a bit of this heat wrap. I don't need too much of this, I don't think. Just cut some of that off. Like that. There we go. So I know that that joint is tight now, so I'm not worried about that. And I'm just gonna wrap round this here. So there we go. That's got that uh, nicely enclosed now. Silence is now outside. I can now fire it up and start to get warm in here. So those of you who haven't seen my setup here, so I've just got a power supply put on there. You can put a back up, back up battery as well. I may go down that road a bit later on. There it is there, it's a five kilowatt Vivo one. I'll leave a link in the description below, although I think they're running a bit low on stock at the moment. So just coming around this side of the wall is my fuel tank, which I've got mounted there. There's the fuel filter and the uh, pump as well going through the wall. So that's already rigged up. So coming around here, to turn the power supply on, I'll just throw that switch, and you can either turn it on via the remote control. That's the reason you turn it off, folks. If you just have a battery connected, that LED stays alight all the time, and that can probably drain your battery down. So that's one of the reasons why I've got a switch power supply there as well. And then you can either turn it on via your remote, or you can turn it on via the panel. So let's just turn it on there. There we go, so that goes on. 
and uh, it blows out cold air straight away because it's got a fan at the back here where it sucks the room air in and then warms it up via the heat exchanger chamber there blowing across it. There's no fumes that are in here folks by the way. This is a diesel heater but you don't get any fumes in here. The actual combustion chamber is sealed within a, a, a combined chamber which is right up in there and sits in there so the fan here just blows air over that and the warm air comes out here so it's got nothing to do with leaking any air uh, carbon monoxide in there although I probably will put one in there. I've bought a couple of carbon monoxide sensors anyway. So what you've got first of all is the glow plug will light up Let's take that cover off there now. The glow plug will light up and when the glow plug heats that diesel up in here to a certain temperature, that will ignite the diesel and then it will start the burn and you'll hear the fuel pump clicking. That's how these things work basically. As you can see, it's very cold in there, look. Sort of three degrees centigrade in here at the moment. So um, I can hear the pump ticking away. The pump's ticking away. So that means it's fired. And then you'll see the glow pad go out in a minute. There's a little indicator telling you the pump started down there. And then this will start to warm up. But as I say, I've seen these exhausts get red hot. So that's all right if you want to warm your workshop up that way. But me having chemicals in here, things like spray cans and paints and stuff, look, as you can see there, I don't want any vapors to be able to ignite with that red hot exhaust when it's on full pelt. So I'm gonna leave that on full power now, folks. This will really start to belt out some warm air in a minute when it gets going. And as you can see, the glow plug is now gone out. So that means that we're now combusting and it's self, and that exhaust is warm now. So that's starting to get warm now. But now I'm safe because I haven't got them fumes coming out from that exhaust baffle. There we go, leave it like that. As I say, the room temperature when I come in here was four degrees. So we're, we're gonna so hopefully get this to creep up now. Right, so I've just come out the front, folks, to get my battery on and pull my car under the carport. But look, look what's here, look. Project Man's here. What's he up to? What are you up to, Project Man? Track rod ends. Oh, I see, you've got a little bit of a clonk, you said. A clonk, and then one's with advised on the MOT the other side, so. Right, and it's due for an MOT shortly. A uh, week and a half. Are, they, are you filming this for the video? I'll be filming the other side, the ones that was due for an advisory. But you found a clonky track rod in there, haven't you? Yeah, this was a bit clonky as well. And that's where you felt on the steering the... Uh, look, listen, listen, folks. There you go. So that's what he's changing now. So that means I can't get my car under the carport yet, but I can still get the battery on and get it run up and started. So um, as I say, it's not run for a while. So let's get over to the Mondeo ST, get the bonnet up and um, at least try and get it started. Right, one of the other reasons, folks, why I want to get this thing run up and also get it under the carport is because there's a lot of blinking moisture inside. Not sure where that's come from. So, uh, I don't want it going mouldy. So let's open the car up. Our car's open now. I'll get the bonnet up in the air. Oh, there we go. And that's what you tend to get, folks, when you... Uh, leave a car standing for a long period of time. Look, all this uh, moisture under there. Look at them leaves over the back there as well, look. So I've got to get the, the battery back on and back in there. So let me do that and I'll come back to you. Right, folks, got the battery back on. I'll just put that case back on for the moment. Hoping I don't need to take it off again. If this battery's knackered, I don't know yet. So, right, let's try and start it up. Wait there. I'm just getting inside the car. All right, I'm inside, folks. Right, here we go. Straight up. Start it straight up, folks. Right, let's get out. Okay. Sounds sweet as a nut, folks. So there she is. Ain't been started for a good couple of months anyway. Let's put it that way. So I'm going to let that tick over. I want it, want it to get to uh, temperature. Oh, I'll just lower that bonnet for a minute. Because I want to get rid of all these blinking seeds on there. Look at all these things, folks. Look. If I get all these off, then I can move the car out. Look at them. Look. 
I will get this covered up eventually if I don't use it again, but I want to get it back on the road, you see. And I've got an issue here with this weather strip here, look. Can you see that sort of come away there? Well, I want to upgrade these and um, I reached out to a fellow YouTuber, ST220 Restorations. He's got a few of these uh, ST220s and uh, I emailed him because I wanted to upgrade these to the ones with the chrome strips on them. And uh, you can get these strips with the uh, chrome uh, edges on them, but he informed me that you also need the quarter lights as well. These glass to, to do the job properly. So um, he's priced up a set that he has for me. And uh, I'm just waiting to hear from him now so I can send in the money and I can get these changed. I just wanted the uprated ones because that one, as I said to you, is damaged there. Look, so um, rather than put them on, because I've got the uprated rear lights on these, as you well know, I'll um, just change the whole lot over and change the quarter light over as well. So uh, he's going to send me the whole package there, which is nice of him. God knows how they get here because there's, look, looking above me here, look, there's no blinking trees where they've come from, apart from the big trees at the front of the house there. So they must carry on the wind, you know? Just get the majority of them out for now anyway. But coming inside, as you can probably see folks, on the windshield there on the inside, there's the, all this moisture. So um, I don't know, quite know why I've got that in there. Normally it's signs of a leak, but there isn't a leak as far as I know. It sounds lovely though, doesn't it? And also that's when you take the battery off, and put the battery back on that goes back to Fahrenheit well over here in the UK I like that on centigrade so you just hold that button in there and it changes back to centigrade so that's what I've done there so I'll get it up to temperature we'll move it out and then I'll come back to you So that's now on recirculation. I've left it on high speed, the aircon, not the aircon, the um, the heater, and hopefully that'll help. And look who's just turned up as well, folks. My little princess. How are you, baby? Is it cold out? Cold. Yeah? Very cold. I've got some work to do on your car as well, haven't I? Yeah, I was just saying, it's a shame we can't go in that one, isn't it? Yeah, well, we can't because it's not got to do the brakes. Yeah, so that's it's out of MOT mine and out of tax as well. Uh, we'll be going to Scotland in Sharon soon. I've got some work to do on her one. The, uh, we put new springs on this the other week, folks. The new back springs. and Because uh, they were obviously broken. And it sort of highlighted up another possible issue. The, the, the rear end's pattering along the road when it goes to a bump. So I've got some new dampers to go on this as well. They've actually turned up today. So I'll be doing that job very, very shortly. And um, also there was something else I had to do on there as well, wasn't there? Oh, I've got to do an oil change as well, oil and filter change. So these have got to be done very quickly, these jobs, so you'll be seeing these coming up on the channel very, yeah, very soon. I've got the wrong weather. Eh? And I've picked on the wrong weather, Sharon, because it's yeah. bleating freezing out here. But I've done that diesel heater now, that's uh, sorted out. But uh, yeah, nice to get the ST220 back on the road again, folks. That's what I want to do. And the issue I've got with this is had the uprated brakes on this. I'll come around here, I don't know whether you can see, I think it's got the ST225 uh, calipers on it, the bigger calipers there for the Ford Focus 2.5 litre. Because of that, you can't just go to uh, a motor factor to type in your registration number like you normally do, because it's non-standard parts on there. So I've been on the Ford Focus parts uh, thing online, and they say there's two or three different sizes of disc and pads for this model. So that's another reason why I want to get the car out get it up in the air and uh, measure the actual discs so that I know what new discs to order. I'll probably put new discs and new pads on the front as well. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. But I can't do that until he gets out the blinking way. Yeah, I'll be done soon. So what are you doing, one side or both sides? I'm just doing the... The track ins. Right, so we'll leave him to get on. And uh, once he gets out my way, I can get mine up in the air, measure the discs up, and then I'll get them discs and pads ordered. So I can hopefully try and get this back on the road again, maybe before Christmas, we'll see how we go. Anyway, I'll see you in a minute. <sighs> right, so I'm out the front, folks. I've got my car where I wanted it. And um, I'm gonna take the, this wheel off now, get it jacked up. I don't 
don't know if you've seen one of them, folks. That's uh, specific to these type of wheels. That's the Ford part. That look, and most people just sort of pull these centre covers off. But you're, you're supposed to come with the car, and you just sort of put it underneath like that, and hopefully it flies off like that. I forgot I had bloody locking wheel nuts on that. I thought I took all them off. So let me get this jacked up now. Get these cracked off, and uh, and you notice some of these wheels, folks. Look at that. Look. Now I haven't done that. <laughs> I've not done that. There's two people who have drove my car and I've asked both of them and one of them did own up to doing it and as a result of that they're going to be repainted again so there you go these things happen but you just carry on and uh, it will get sorted so that's not a 17 mil I thought I put a 19 mil down here yeah these are 19 mils on here folks I'm going to get them locking wheel nuts taken off I've got look, a set of spare ones so uh, I'll be using them so let's remove that I hate these locking wheel nut things. I've had them break before, as I said to you. There we go. And see what I mean? You never know how tight people have done them up when you take your wheels to a garage or whatever. So that's why I don't like putting them in. Right, let's get it up in the air and get the wheel off. I'll get an axle stand under there. Right, let's get that there. So we've just whipped them uh, other wheel nuts off now. So they're doing a deal at the moment at um, GSF, 64% off of batteries. So I'm probably gonna put a decent, good quality battery on at the moment. So uh, that's another thing I'm gonna get. And while I'm under here as well, I'll have a good look around to see if there's any other components that are worn as well. As I say, it will need an MOT very shortly. Right, so that's the wheel off. Right, so here we are, folks. Shocks look like original motorcraft ones, which may be the original ones when they went on there. Could do with replacing, actually, but uh, that can probably come in the summer. And here's the uh, uprated brakes in question. So I will be taking these calipers off, probably refurbishing the calipers as well. Although there's quite a bit of meat still left on the pads there, as you can see, but... Uh, well, I am suspecting these discs may be um, warped because of the noise and the vibration I'm getting through the steering column. So I need to measure these discs. We're looking at about 320 mil, folks. So I'll have a look online, see if they've got a size disc uh, which is 320 mil, and then I'll see if they're in stock. So inside we go and see if we can order them parts up. Right, folks, so I'm online here. GSF are doing a 65% discount at the moment. They are 320 millimeters. They do them here. But the thing with these ones is, is that they are not grooved like the ones that are on the car. As you can see, these ones are, let's have a look, 320 again. Look, they're drive tech ones, but they've got none of the slots and dimples in them. So I went onto eBay, and these are the actual ones that are actually fitted to the car in actual with the same formations of grooves with ebc pads as well and they're 154 pounds so i've actually ordered them so i'll have to wait for them to come obviously so uh, yeah that's the front brakes to be replaced so there you go folks that's all i can do for the moment i've come to a bit of a standstill until them parts arrive anyway i'm gonna leave the video here for now just a little tinkering video this one we'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now